All right, today's lesson is all about Venn diagrams. And um, just want to go over a few different notations and what that would look like, Venn diagram and meanings and so on. Um, so this you have available to you on Canvas. I'm not going to really write anything down on it. Um, we have covered union and intersection at the beginning of the year. It's been a while. Union kind of looks like a U, and intersection kind of looks like an N. Um, so the one thing I will write is when we were talking about this before, the um, N is like the letter N in the word and. Union means or, and um, intersection means and. So um, when we do union, it could be anything in either of the sets, either or set. So if we have a Venn diagram here where the outside is the number four, number one is here, number three is here, and they have number two in common, um, the union would be everything with one, two, and three shaded. And then for the intersection would be what they overlap. So if we have our two Venn diagrams over here, the only thing they have in common would be two. Over here would be how you would write your answer as a set of numbers. Now this um, symbol right here where we have a line above or we have a little apostrophe after just means the complement. And we know um, when we talk about probability, every probability is uh, between zero to one, where zero times it would happen, 100% of the time it would happen. Um, anything in between would be possible probabilities. You can't be less than zero, you can't be more than one. So a complement would be everything that is not that probability. If I know that the probability of an event is um, 0.75, then I would know that the probability of not that event, or you can write it like E apostrophe, the probability of not that event would be 0.25. The two of these together would add together to equal one. So when we talk about complement, um, the probabilities have to equal one. But looking at the Venn diagram, if we're talking about everything that's not set A, then here's set A, the one with the one in it. It would be this portion of set B and then everything that's in the um, outside region. Here this says not the union of A and B. And where we have the union of A and B right here, not the union of A and B would be everything else. And then this right here says not the intersection of A and B. So number two is the intersection of A and B, not the intersection would be everything else. Okay, the next notes that we're gonna look at. Oops, <laughs> I forgot where to put it. Um, are just <clears throat> shading appropriate things. Um, so I have notes on Canvas that says, this is the one that says, I'm just gonna do numbers one through six on it. So um, go ahead and open that. You can always pause my video at any time. This says, shade in the appropriate area of the Venn diagram. Um, if you'd like to pause this and try it without me, that would be a good idea. And then unpause it to see if you're doing it correctly. Shade in the appropriate area of the Venn diagram. Nom, I'm sorry, this would be A intersection with B. So this would be and. So A is the circle, B is the circle, and would be where they overlap right here. Oops, that one doesn't work. Okay. And then this would be A intersection but with not B. So if I'm not sure about this, we want A for sure, but we want not B. So I'm going to maybe use a color and I'm going to say, okay, here's A. That's A. And then I'll use a different color for not B. Mm. Not B, the complement of B, not B. So not B would be all of this stuff here. So 
So anything that's not B, I'm shading in purple. Okay, so wherever my two lines cross hatched, wherever they overlap, that is going to be the intersection of A not B. So I'll take a darker color and I'll just shade that part in. So A not intersection of A not B would be All right, not A, so everything except for A. So we're going to stay outside of A. Okay, there's not A. The union of B and C. The union of B and C. That means everything that's in B or C. So we can... We can um, Color in B and color in C at the same time. And we don't have to worry about any overlapping because it's union and it's just everything there. This says the intersection of A, B, and C. So where do A, B, and C all intersect? So you could color all three of these three different colors and look where they overlap and that's going to be the um, answer. Or you might be able to picture it I'll just, uh, I'll pretend I can't picture it, I guess. There's A. Here's B. And then here's C. Let me say, where do all three of them overlap? It would be just in this little guy in the middle. Okay. And then finally, um, let's see. Oh, that's the exact same. Oh, no, but it's a different picture. <laughs> My bad. All right, so we've got um, A intersection with B. I'm oh, sorry, A intersection, not B. So A, I'll go ahead and shade in A. And then I'm going to do the intersection, but I'm going to do not B. So not B will be anything that's not the circle B. So now where do the two overlap? That's going to be in this little shape right here. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the other set of notes, and we're going to do both examples from the other set of notes. <clears throat> so Hector has entered the following names in the contact list of his new cell phone. Um, here's all the names, and this says we're going to represent the set A is going to be the names that begin with a vowel, and then set B is going to be the names that end with a vowel. So Alicia begins with a vowel, but also ends with a vowel. So she's going to be in the middle here. Brie does not begin with a vowel, but she does end with a vowel. Steve does not begin with a vowel, but he ends with a vowel. Don, Don does not begin with a vowel or end with a vowel. So he's going to be floating out here. And Ellis begins with a vowel, but does not end with a vowel. Okay? List the outcomes of A. So the only outcome of A is Ellis. Nope, I ha ha ha, just totally lied. There's two outcomes for A. Alicia and Ellis. I forgot to look in the middle when I did that. All right, list the outcomes for B. So B would be Alicia, Brie, and Steve. List the outcomes of A union B. So either A or B. So that would be Ellis, 
Alicia, Bree, Steve. And then list the outcomes of A intersection with B. So where do they overlap? And that's only at Alicia. So now list the outcomes of A apostrophe. So that means the complement of A or not A. So everything up here that is not A would be Dawn, Bree, and Steve. And list the outcomes of the intersection of, not the intersection, the union of A and B, but not the union of A and B. So we've already done the union of A and B right here. It's Ellis, Alicia, Bree, Steve. If we look at the picture, it's everything in either of the circles. So if I want not the union of A and B, then that's only going to be Dawn. He doesn't fit into either of those um, categories. Right? And then the last one that we're going to do was actually on both worksheets. Um, that's why, I, but I, they were PDFs, so I couldn't like combine them into one worksheet. Anyway, they are in both worksheets. It doesn't matter which one you do this on. Let's see. This one's bigger. Okay, Miss Smith took a poll. Mr. Smith took a poll of his students' favorite type of weather. The students had the choice of hot, cold, and or rain, snow. So we've got, well, hot, warm. I guess that means hot. There's cold and then rain, snow. The results are displayed in the Venn diagram. We need to find the probability of cold. So what this probability means, if I'm going to choose one student at random, what is the probability that I will pick somebody who likes cold? So let's let's do some numbers here. How many people like cold? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. This might be better if I'm using the colored one. If you're not using the colored one, maybe pause it for a moment and like draw a um, circle around the different circles so we can like look at it a little bit easier. Um, so we're using the blue one right now. And I know I totally just added all those up and then I forgot the number I got. 6, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 15 in the cold, and then in red, nope, I don't need red yet. I need to know that there's 15 people in cold. Now what I need to know after this is how many kids total there are. So we'll just do total maybe here at the bottom. So there's 15 here, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 5, 26, 27. So there's a total of 27. So probability that we pick somebody who likes cold is going to be 15 out of 27. Now I wrote it not on the line because we are going to have to reduce fractions. We want to always write fractions in lowest um, in the lowest uh, form. So 15 and 27 are both divisible by 3. Keep using the pen that doesn't have any ink in it. So I'm going to get 5 over 9, and that does not reduce further, so 5 ninths. Find the probability that we that it is not warm. Probability that it is not somebody who likes warm. So over here, how many people like warm? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 like warm. Did I count up the total? Okay, just making sure I count that up right the first time. Okay, so total people that like warm are 14. So the people that do not like warm 
would be 27 take away 14 over the total of 27. So 27 take away 14, what would that be? 13 over 27, does that reduce? No. So that would be the probability of picking somebody who does not like warm. Find the probability that we pick somebody who likes cold or likes warm. So I need to know how many people are in the cold or in the warm. So it'd probably be easier if we just saw how many people weren't in either of those, but like there's three people not in either of those. So if I think about three people not, that would mean that there, that there were 24 in. But let's just count up and make sure. So in the, the red, we've got 15. I mean, sorry, in the blue, we've got 15, but we still have number 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Yep, 24 total. So you could count up all of them that are in either of these, or you can just say how many aren't in either of those circles. Does that reduce? Yes, you got to reduce by three. And we will get... eight over nine. Find the probability that this would be the, oh my gosh, did I just do this one totally wrong? Yes, I did. Sorry guys. I am not going to redo the entire video. I'm just going to redo this question. Let's start over. That was not or. That was and. So this is the intersection of cold and warm. So we're looking at how many are in the middle of cold and warm. So that's just one, two, three, four, five. Five out of 27. Sorry, it's kind of late here. <laughs> All right. Um, Probability of the intersection, so we're doing and, warm and rain. So we've got warm, which is red, and then we went to intersection with people that like rain. So we're kind of looking at the intersection of the gray and the red, and there's four students in there. So four out of 27, and that does not reduce. Find probability that we would pick somebody who likes warm, cold, and rain. So these are all ands. So we're finding the overlapping of warm, cold, and rain. So warm in red, cold in blue. So right now we're looking at this little, um, I don't know what figure that is, football in the middle. But then we also want somebody who likes rain. So we're also looking inside the gray. So it's going to be this part right in the middle. Charlie, Ray, and Jenny. Three of them. And that does reduce by threes. So you get one ninth. And then now we're doing a or. Um, find the probability that it is cold or warm. I think this is the one I did earlier. Um, so we're 15 here plus whatever extra from warm, or you can look at it as three of them don't like cold or warm. So that would be like 27 minus 3 over 27, which is 24 over 27. I've already done this one. I just did it in the wrong spot. Divide that by 3. So we get 8 nights. Okay, so your assignment is a worksheet and it's just going to practice more on that um, on using your Venn diagrams. I would highly recommend that you color in the different circles just to help you even if you just you know have a highlighter and you highlight you know, one of them in yellow and the other one in a light color. I don't, I only have one highlighter, I think. I'll just make this one orange so you can see. That way you, you have a little bit easier job seeing what's in what. Um, and then you'll be submitting this on Canvas by Friday. All right, have a great day. Please see me in office hours if you need help.
Bye.